tell us a little bit about how the minerals, oil and gas sector started. What prompted Singapore Exchange to develop a minerals, oil and gas rules and try to attract the industry here? I think uh, if you talk about uh, minerals, oil and gas or MOG, uh, we have to go back to 2011 when we first introduced MOG listing rules. Uh, at that point in time, we had about seven listed companies that were in MOG. And today, we have 27. So that's a, a nice bit of growth that we've seen over the, the last few years. If you ask about uh, why mineral, oil, and gas, uh, it's because if you look at Singapore and its positioning, Singapore is an international financial center, and it's also a global commodities trading hub. So it's, it's very natural that uh, we'd also want to tap on the upstream. It's a perfect environment for companies that are involved in exploration and production, and we wanted to have the listing rules that could make it happen. So we're now three years after that, four mm -hmm. years after that. Right. How do you think Singapore Exchange is, is sitting compared to your original targets when you, in, when you launched the rules? Uh, I think uh, we've, uh, we've done quite well. Uh, we thought we've gone from 7 to 27. Um, I, I think it's really, if you want to talk about, uh, it's really about benchmarking. And I think one thing that we've tried to do is benchmark the proportion of MOG companies that are listed on SGX to those on other exchanges. If I just to, to look at just the minerals companies, uh, we actually, maybe a little bit less than 2% of all the listed companies here are minerals. Uh, other exchanges, uh, international exchanges maybe between 5 to 6 percent, for example, Hong Kong and London. Of course, we can't come close to Australia or, or, or Canada at this point in time, which is about 40 percent of the listing are actually mineral oil and gas companies. So in terms of the breadth of, of geography and the breadth of commodities, how are you placed now in Singapore? I think it's no surprise that the majority of the commodities listed, they are Southeast Asian. Uh, we've got lots of listings from Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, Australia. We've got companies of assets in China and North America as well. And I think in the coming years, uh, we will see the variety increase. Are there any no-nos for Singapore Exchange in terms of countries or commodities that, that you want to see companies listed? I think the, uh, the, the mantra is we want good assets, good management, good business models, good companies. That's what we want. What would you think are the key external reasons why companies haven't come to Singapore in the last two years in particular? Uh, I, I think a, a lot of it is, is perception. Uh, people are wondering about, firstly, the investors. and uh, That's one of the reasons why we've had a very active investor education program, of which uh, AMC has been a, a major part of. Uh, and I think uh, over, over the last two years, judging from the questions and the, the responses that we've had, uh, in the auditorium from investors from all walks of life, I think that that has been answered. Okay, investors here, I think they, they, they do understand mineral and oil and gas. Um, I, I, uh, the second point, I think, uh, is really about the general development of the ecosystem. We've had some IPO professionals that have been very active in mineral and oil and gas, and I think these are the ones that have reaped the most. And uh, the next stage is getting more IPO professionals who are active but not in mineral oil and gas to get into mineral oil and gas and to have those international IP professionals that are not located here to consider coming to Singapore to setting up. And in terms of the, the commodity price and the, uh, the malaise that the industry is in, how many listings do you think you might have lost? Um, I think uh, if you look at uh, the, the commodity uh, price swings, uh, yes, prices go up, prices go down, markets do hopefully we all hope will recover. I think what I like the most about minerals and mining projects is besides the commodity price, that's also the technical risk involved, uh, a lot of value can be created simply from properly exploring, defining, developing resources and reserves and bringing that into production. One of the, the rules that uh, Singapore Exchange has in, a, in association with Hong Kong Exchange is the requirement to have a fairly high level of confidence in the mineral resources before you're prepared to get a listing. Mm -hmm. How have you found that to work in practice? Uh, I think it's uh, worked quite well. Uh, now, just to rehash, a minerals company needs to have achieved at least some level of indicated resources. So blue sky, green field type projects just don't work in this market. But uh, as a result, what we've seen is companies that have spent time, energy, and effort. They've developed projects. They're ready to get on to the, uh, next, uh, uh, to the next level, and they're here to raise funds and boost the profile. And I think that's what we like. 
So the, obviously then in that situation you are being quite risk averse. Are you protecting your potential investors or is there another reason why you want to maintain those rules? Uh, I think, you, you, uh, particularly AMC and yourself uh, from Australian background, you know, uh, you, you can't compare the Singapore market to the Australian market. Mm -hmm. Australia has had many hundreds of years of uh, mineral exploration and development. Uh, the market here, I, we know that some pockets are, are, are fluent in mineral and oil and gas. Some areas of the market that they're still learning and, and getting, getting into mineral and oil and gas. Uh, I think the, the listing rules they're set up in order to ensure a very fair, transparent and orderly market and I think for the time being that's probably where it's going to be. And in following up on that question, the feedback that you've had from companies that have listed or companies that are looking to list, what are, what are the key concerns that they come to you to say uh, with respect to the requirements and the compliance issues with listing? What, are there any really major issues that you're, you're being informed about or, or asked about? Uh, I think a part of it is a matter of just acclimatization and getting all the various moving parts. When I say moving parts, I mean the bankers, the lawyers, the auditors, and, and, and even the other mineral consultants uh, make sure that they, they also understand what happens and goes on in an IPO review process. But, but once you go through that, I think once, I think you'll understand what the expectations are. It just makes the second and third one much easier. So do, moving forward now, do you see a time when the exchange may become a little less conservative? No. Not at all? No. Okay. Um, I think um, uh, you talk about it being conservative. Uh, it, it's, it's really about a, a creating a, a market which, uh, which, which works and functions properly. I mentioned that having a fair, transparent and orderly market uh, and I think a fair level of conservatism relative to uh, to, to what you may expect. I think that that's a necessary part of that. So it's logical now that the rules have been out for a few years. When do you expect that the exchange will release some revised rules? Oh, well, we're, we're looking at that right now. So uh, in, the, uh, in the coming months, we're, we're probably will we'll be taking a look at maybe not revising the rules. We may put out a practice note mm -hmm. that would help uh, with uh, uh, with the interpretation and actual usage of the, the rules. Okay. And so hopefully that will improve some of the transparency in the rules. Yeah, uh, yes. And uh, I think uh, uh, related to that is, is also, as I mentioned earlier, getting more IP professionals uh, active in, in the tuna market. Because the, the more you can write rules and, they may, and you can have them reviewed by the public and by lawyers and everyone thinks it's okay, but it's another thing to actually go out and start trying to use the rules. And of course, there will be some feedback on that. And, and moving forward, wh when do you envisage that the exchange will develop a, an MOG index to track the performance of the mining uh, industry? We're actually, uh, that's in the works as, okay. as we speak. Um, I think uh, for an index to work, the, there needs to be several parameters. For example, I was told that uh, you need at least 20 listings. So for, uh, or, or 27? Or 20, yeah. And then after that, you've got to look at the weightages and all that. But for sure, it's in the works. I think it makes sense. And, uh, in the coming months, we'll, we'll see some effort towards that. And also, um, in terms of, of companies, the company scale, we don't have, Singapore Exchange doesn't yet have a 10 billion company market cap in the MOG space, certainly not in the minerals side of that right, space. Um, when, you know, what's stopping a, a, a company that size planning to list here in Singapore? Well, uh, we introduced the secondary listing rules mm -hmm. late last year, and this is actually going to help a lot of those uh, large $10 billion companies that, are, uh, that may be listed on a, on a different exchange to seek a second listing on SGX. So I, I think that's something on the cards as well. But that will, you would see that as a secondary listing rather than a primary listing? I think, uh, uh, I mean, we talk about $10 billion companies. The reality is that there's a, there's a limited supply of such $10 billion companies. And I think it's realistic to, to see that most of them may already be listed elsewhere. For those who are still private, then they can still make the right choice on this on SGX. In three years' time, how big will the market be here? It'll be, you know, that's like asking a geologist. That's how so, how big is, is a, a ball of string, you know, I mean. Chonglek is a salesman, so we're going to hear a salesman's <laughs> take. No, I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like asking a geologist, how, how long is a ball of string, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, it, can, it can be pretty we're good at long. That. Yeah. But, it, but in terms of your, roughly your targets, are you hoping to double in the next three years? I think uh, the market should certainly uh, increase by uh, 
several multiples in the coming years. So. And so how many, how many companies will have to list to enable you to get your next bonus? Uh, well, I mean, it, it, I've, I've, I've talked about the ratios and, uh, and you know, you, someone can go and do the math. Uh, I think it, it's a fairly significant number. Uh, there's a lot more work that, that needs to be done, uh, both on the ground with investors, uh, with the IPO professionals, and uh, with the if, issuing companies as well. Well, thank you for sharing some time with us, Chong Lek. Very much appreciate it. <laughs>